And you're still listening to Limerick City Community Radio, your city, your station, your voice, here on www.lccr.ie with me, Patrick Mercy, kickstarting your week as you're used to it every Monday, 12 to 1. It's time for our weekly guests today. Woo-hoo! And all the way from Atai County Kildare, we have Joanne Callahan on the line. I met Joanne while networking uh, with Your Holistic Academy. If you listen to the show regularly, you would have heard, you're probably sick of me talking about Your Holistic Academy. So what you do is just go over to the website and Google it and look it up. So I have Joanne on the uh, radio and I knew I needed to talk to her. When I, um, something, the stuff that she's an expert in, that's what I wanted to say, is something that comes up in every mental health and well-being talk as one of the things you need to do to have a really centered well-being life and when I saw that, she, that Joanne was an expert in that, I said, I need to have her on the radio show because Joanne is a sleep expert. Joanne, welcome to Limerick City Community Radio. How are you? Thank today? you. Thanks, Patrick. I'm really excited to be here. You're so full of positive energy. It's so great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what we do. Uh, like the program's called Kickstart Your Week. And if I wasn't uh, being positive, like it'd be uh, Downstart Your Week. And we don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, to, welcome to Limerick virtually. Joanne. thank you it's so great <laughs> <laughs> so as i introduce you you're a sleep expert i've never come across a sleep expert before how does mm. one become a sleep expert you get good at, at, at having a good night's sleep i suppose <laughs> 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 well i what happened was um i became a, a holistic practitioner so i i studied massage and reiki and mm-hmm. all of that and i became aware of energy uh, and how powerful energy is and how healing it can be as well but before that I'll just go back a little bit my daughter died in 2007 and it was only after her death when I realized part of my recovery if you like mm-hmm. uh, and accepting her death part of that was I learned how powerful our minds are because I mean I was just devastated and you know as you would be for any death mm-hmm. in the family but not your own child your own child is not children are not supposed to go before you awesome. but I learned so much about the mind and how powerful our minds are and how we can be and it's all about our being uh, right now in this present moment and so I began doing massage didn't you know I'm just doing things that that made me feel good and then when I got onto the Reiki and I discovered and learned all about energy and then it transitioned into sleep because my clients um, were all telling me they were very frustrated. They're not sleeping well. They don't have an awful lot of energy. They were tired during the day. And that was when I had, I had, oh, my God, people need to sleep better. So I wrote the book, How to Get a Good Night's Sleep. And it was only when I was writing that book that I discovered so much more that sleep can benefit us in every cell in our body on all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally. I mean, it's just profound what sleep can do for a person. And I went on a quest that everybody has to know about this and and how to sleep well. Okay, so when you were saying like, because you you did the uh, Reiki and the other therapists and you studied those, and then you became interested in sleep, but like to become interested about something and then to become an expert in, in it or another thing. So what kind of research or did you do courses or? I I done a lot. Of, I, well, first of all, I read an awful lot of things, watched the YouTube videos. Then I did um, a course on Spencer Institute to become a sleep coach, to be qualified uh, as a sleep coach. And then um, obviously sleep is one pillar of health and everything is holistic. Like really everything is holistic. So we can't survive without sleep, but we also need other factors as well. We need our nutrition. We need our mental well-being and um, managing our stress, exercise. So all that is really important in helping us have a good night's sleep. And they all help each other as well. So I became a health and wellness coach as well. So I studied with A Wellness Revolution. And right now at the moment, I am studying now to be board certified as a health and wellness coach. So that's a really good accreditation so I can uh work with with companies on it i'll be more recognized and more credible even as a health uh, and wellness coach i'll be board certified but i am certified as a health and wellness coach at the moment um Mm -hmm. and and so that's really my my accreditations and i think really through your experience as well is where you learn and appreciate about these things as well and for me i've had many experiences over my lifetime um Growing up at home, my father drank quite an awful lot. So there was many sleepless nights and I was the only one who was working in the house at the time. And there was 10 of us living in the house. So you can imagine it was a very busy household. I was the only one working. I had my own son at the time as well. So I was a mother of a young child. 
So life was difficult. Life was really tough. And I was going into work exhausted, like absolutely exhausted. And I dreaded every day getting absolutely exhausted. I used to dread having to get up in the morning. And then when I was in work, I was so tired. I, I, you know, when your head is just bobbing, you're like this, your head is just bobbing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, my God, it's the worst thing ever. And I used to go missing into the ladies toilets, put the lid down on the toilet and put my head against the wall, close the door. And I'd be there for about five minutes just having a power nap. I used to just go missing regularly during the day. And then I'd come home from work in the evening. I was falling asleep on the couch. So I was really sleep deprived. And it had an impact on my physical health because my immune system was very suppressed. It was very low. My mood I was awful. I was just so irritable. I couldn't hold a conversation like I just couldn't it was like yes no conversations it just had an impact on so many different levels and then you know fast forward when I got married my husband uh, snored quite a lot and loudly and it was you know that interrupted my sleep quite a lot but it, it turned out he had sleep apnea and sleep apnea is detrimental if it goes untreated and a lot of people are really unaware of what sleep apnea is or that there is a possibility Mm -hmm. of them having sleep apnea and sleep apnea can lead to diabetes type 2 diabetes obesity heart attacks all these things and heart disease is a big killer in the world at the moment Mm -hmm. so it's really so if it's left untreated it can have a major impact so i've had various experiences of being sleep deprived i had restless legs uh, on my third semester when i was pregnant i used to sit on the side of the bed crying Mm -hmm pleading just for the want of sleep I was so tired so I've had a lot of experiences of not being able to sleep and uh, so I do have an appreciation of sleep and like that as well you know there's other factors um you know uh, exercise and nutrition they all have because it's all holistic and they all have a role to play as I say as well in, in all of this okay fantastic and then and then so you did a lot of research you read a lot you re- then you become a sleep coach. I never actually heard that existed, Joanne. So like I'm, I'm oh, reading already. So all these it. things, all these you new st- qualification things are popping up all over the place. God knows oh, what I will come know. next. What did you say? The Spencer Institute, just in case people yeah. are listening, are interested. Yeah, Spencer Institute. So it's in America. And I had to uh, I had to grab all the information from the course um, and make sure that was a credible academy um, and give it to my insurance company. For them to approve it before I took the course, there's no point in me paying for the course if the my insurance company weren't going to put it on my whatever you know course. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they did. So Spencer Institute and um and then uh, I'm health wellness coach as well as I explained earlier as well. But I'm going yeah, for yeah. board certified now. Yeah, fantastic. So loads of qualifications. So hence the word expert. Fantastic. And then you you read the book. You wrote the book as well. Yeah, so yeah, people, yeah. People can get their hands on the book, I believe. Yeah, it's on how to get a good night's sleep dot com or you can get it on Amazon. It's also available uh, on audio and ebook. Yeah, I've done the right. audio over the, the whole pandemic period. I don't I, I, I did the audio. <laughs> oh, fantastic. How to use the time when you're when you have it. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. So it's available in audio and you can order it online. And it's just how to get a good how to get a good night's sleep dot com. Yeah. Or you'll get it on Amazon as well. Right. Fantastic. I actually I, I looked up the website. It's quite, quite interesting. So people should go and check that. So now that you have the book, what are you doing with that? And how do you how do you go about um, helping people? Yeah. So so what I did was um, so that's one platform that people can can read and find out more information. Mm -hmm. But the problem is with information, we can get more information and more information and more information, but not actually do anything with us. Um, so, for example, you might know how to lose weight. So most people would say, yeah, eat less and. Uh, move more right obviously there's a lot more to it yes uh, but you're, you're not doing it <laughs> right so, so that that's how it is for most people so we have lots of information but we're not applying it so it's applied knowledge so what I did with the book then was I created a workshop create an online course so obviously at the moment uh, there's you know there's no live events so I do have my online uh, workshops on my online uh, courses there's a 12-week live coming up now the 20th of November that's kicking off and um, so there's a 12-week live um, so people come together with me live uh, for an hour, maybe an hour and a half every week. Okay. And I also do a lot of Q&As as well. And you get lots of tools. You get a sleep diary. You get um, it's, it's an e, e copy, electronic copy of sleep diary. Loads of tips and tools of how you can actually uh, apply this to you because each person is unique and they're an individual. So there can be guidelines, general guidelines. But then to really have success in your sleep and, and your health and well-being, 
um, you need to identify what it is that your body needs and what you like as well, more importantly. And I like it. It's not just about sleep, right? It's about the entire holistic well-being of the human being, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I go into nutrition. I go mm-hmm. into uh, movement, exercise, uh, stress management. I do a lot of uh, heart work as well. So we were talking earlier before we start recording about heart coherence and, mm-hmm. and that energy. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, because we need to, we really need to slow down, Patrick, where, you know, our lives are just so busy and um, and it's distracting us from who we really are. Mm-hmm. And an awful lot of us are, you know, we've got stress and anxiety. So many people. Yes. And most people say to me, you know, the majority of the time, it's when I put my head on the pillow, I can't go asleep. Mm-hmm. And it's the head full of thoughts and all the what ifs and the things I have to do tomorrow and, you know, there's lots of things that you can do yes. to help we help you with that. But ultimately, Patrick, if people slow down during the daytime, they'll be able to manage their stress more. They'll have more resilience. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be like you have shock absorbers on you, you know, and uh, you don't take an awful lot of the challenges on, you know, so much. And then you can sleep better. You can, you know, you can, you can just fall asleep naturally. And as human beings, like we are wired to fall asleep naturally. It's a natural yes. process. Yes. I say if, if Maura was here, uh, which is my, my dearly beloved wife, she would tell you like it's horrible like, for her. Like, because I just hit the bed and that's it. I'm gone. Like, two, really? two minutes. Gone. I'm going to give you a ba- ba- bit of bad news, Patrick, about yeah. that, actually. Yeah, that's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Throw it at me. Throw it at me. So throughout. most people say that to me. Most people say, oh, I have no problem going to sleep. They'll say, I'll hit, literally hit my head on the pillow and I'm gone. Well, Patrick, the process of going to sleep at nighttime, it really takes between 10 to 15 minutes. Right. There's, a, there's a test that you can do called the sleep latent, latency test. It's in the book, okay. sleep latency test. And, it, and it, it tests you to see how long it takes you to actually fall asleep. You, you, you use a, a spoon, you hold a spoon in your hand. And when you fall asleep, the, the, the idea is the spoon will fall on the ground and wake you up. And then you can, you can time it and all of that, right? So. Right. But if you if it takes you two minutes or whatever, you're it's actually a sign you're sleep deprived. So oh, you may God. not actually. Yeah. So sorry, Patrick. No, that's <laughs> okay. no don't apologize. Bad news. <laughs> no, no need to apologize. You learn every day. <laughs> it could mean it could mean that even though you may sleep all during the nighttime and you may wake up and have your eight hours of sleep or seven yeah. or whatever it is for you, but you may actually your body may actually need more sleep, more deep sleep. And usually it's the deep sleep where um, where we're, we're not getting enough deep sleep, um, because if you're um, if you're if you've a lot on, you know, you know, this, we talk about the subconscious mind and we store all our memories and all of this. And um, but if you're sleep deprived, uh, you're not actually uh, been able to get into that deep, deep place of sleep. And the deep sleep is ultimately where all the healing and repairing is done. And we right. need to get into that deep sleep for all that recovery and repair. That's so important because our body breaks down during the daytime mm-hmm. and we build it back up at nighttime. That's ultimately what's happening. Fantastic. You talked, so I'll, I'll, I'll mind, I hope I don't sleep for at least 10 minutes tonight. <laughs> 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 but it's a good tip and it's in the book. So like another reason to get it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. And the sleep diary, that's interesting. It's not just about sleep. Is that right? Or is it more than just sleep? But so, because how do I, how do I do a diary about sleep? It just intrigues me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the diary, so it's like, so if you, it, what, what you can measure when you can measure something, then you have more of an idea of yeah. where it is that you're, you need to pay attention to. So when you can measure something, you can improve on it. Okay. So that's the theory we do in business and all sorts of different things yeah. as well. So the sleep diary, basically, um, you, you, you um, track your journal, what it is that you did right before you went to bed. Um, you know, what you, what you ate, uh, because food can have an impact on how well we're sleeping at nighttime. For example, if you're eating a lot of uh, cakes, you know, most people like a dessert after the dinner or whatever. So there's lots of sugar there that you're going to get the, the glucose hit. And after the glucose, that's going to have lots of insulin then in the body. And then you're going to get that crash. And that can happen during the nighttime. A lot of people say they wake up during the nighttime and it could be a blood sugar issue. And it could be that you're eating a lot of the wrong foods. You're eating a lot of the carbohydrates. So carbohydrate, like white carbohydrates, because they, you know, the, the brown carbohydrates, um, they have more fiber. So it slows down that glucose hit. Mm-hmm. So uh, things like that. So you record things like that in the diary. And then when you wake up in the morning time, you say how well you sleep, the number of hours that you slept. So you're recording basically everything. And then you do it over uh, seven days. And it's really to create a trend and have a look at the trend 
and mm-hmm. see how you're sleeping and and that that's really and it's it's really profound what you can see when you keep a diary yeah yeah, yeah. Mine, mine is roughly about half one till about seven or half one till eight you're a, a night owl are you mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah no it's it's from and i used to dj when i was uh, when i was younger in uni and all that like i've never been gone to sleep before one or two in the morning it's just a habit Episode. right yeah and yeah yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not saying it's good or bad i'm just saying that's just the way it is yeah and, and the thing about it. night owls there are a lot of night owls patrick and some you know, for some people there there are true night owls and it's genetic so there are some true night yeah. owls but then some people who are night owls it's just habitual it's just as it's a habit like you were saying mm-hmm. you did djing so it's you just got into that habit and um, so so for a lot of night owls that habit can be broken but the thing about night owls is we have this circadian clocks with this 24 hour biological process. And ideally, and if you look at the Chinese clock as well, you know, you can find more information there. But the Chinese clock says, you know, ideally, you know, 10 o'clock is when we're supposed to be going to bed or at least before 12 midnight, because um, this is when the gallbladder meridian and um, the liver meridian is when it's activated. And these are detoxifying organs and we need to detox before we can uh, do the the repairing and the building mm-hmm. up and what have you and this includes our thoughts as well by the way and yes. um, so ideally getting to bed before 12 o'clock and you've heard that saying an hour before 12 is or what's it an hour whatever that saying is i can't remember but uh it's if you get to bed before 12 o'clock it's worth more than after 12 o'clock oh, so yeah. ideally ideally going to bed before 12 o'clock and i find personally if i go to bed at a quarter past 12 I feel like I've a bit of a hangover the next morning when I wake oh, up. Okay. I do. And that's just yeah, me yeah. personally. But uh, I, my bedtime is 10 o'clock, 10, half 10. That's my bedtime. Yeah. Because I, it, maybe it's just because a habit, like you said, because I literally, I've gone through runs as well, where we run through the night. Uh, yeah. And like, I'm fully, it, it, I, I'm not even tired the next morning. So the, the, these runs would sometimes start at midnight till noon. So we'd run for 12 yeah. hours and we'd run through the night. And there's no tired, yeah. tiredness at the end of it, which is just like amazing. But that's probably to do with energy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see, Patrick, do you practice? Um, I know you appreciate nature and all of that. And that's really important to detoxify the body, if you like, in a sense, because, you know, the earth has the the ions, the, the negative ions. And um, it, it's a really important factor when it comes to energy as well. And mm-hmm that can help the body detoxify in a, in a sense. And the more that we help the body detoxify during the daytime, the less work the body has to do at nighttime, ultimately. Mm-hmm. And um, so all those factors are taken into account as well. And if you kind of rest and relax during the daytime as well, that also helps the process. So um, you, you, I think you do meditation, do you? Do you do Three meditation? Times a day. Yeah, so that, can, that, that, that is absolutely superb. So that's really benefiting you, Patrick, as well. It's, it's, it's a thing I learned, and you probably heard of this, habit stacking. Yes. So habit stacking is where you attach a habit to an existing habit. So I know I eat three times a day. So if I yes. stack my meditation after my meal, uh, yeah. then like so, so that's it becomes a habit after a while. Yeah, it's like a trigger. So when you're, yeah, after you have your meal, you know what's coming next. It's a routine, basically. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So that's always the thing. If you want, to, if you want to create a new habit for yourself, attach it to an existing one. It's easier. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant because your mind knows what's coming next, and the body does love yeah. routine. And I talk a lot about. Routine for sleep. Okay. Yeah, I talk a lot. And even like you as a night owl, Patrick, as long as you're consistently keeping the same times, mm-hmm. as long as you're consistently going to bed and waking up at the same time, that's not a stress on the body. It's people mm-hmm. who are doing shift work, for example, you know, the way they'd have three days on, three days off. Mm-hmm. That is devastating to the body because the mm-hmm. body is always trying to get back into a routine and mm-hmm. it's causing stress on the body. So if you can keep a routine, even if you're going to bed late at night, if, if you know, um, that, that's really key. And you, you like ultimately the idea of a good night's sleep is to sleep straight through, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we are actually designed. We have the sleep cycle, so we have we go to yes. this transition of the sleep cycle. We go from light sleep to deep sleep, and it goes around in a circle, right? Fifty percent of our night ultimately is in uh, stage two, which is a light sleep. So many of us actually do wake up, but we don't realize it. Now, thousands and thousands of years ago, we actually used to sleep in two, two, two different. Um, slots if you like and and really the idea behind that was and uh we're we're very intelligent our our whole being um and how we've evolved because we used to sleep in caves say back then right and you know there was a threat danger or whatever so that's where the night owls and the morning uh larks came from right 
And it really what it was was there was a certain amount of people that would be awake while another part of the tribe would be asleep and it was a safety mechanism. So this is how we've evolved. So there's nothing wrong with it as long as uh, we don't make a big deal about it. Some people, they'll wake up and they'll go, oh, I'm awake. And then they go and look at the clock. Right. So what's happening there is you're instantly getting a hit of cortisol, which is your stress hormone. Cortisol is your wake up hormone as well. Whereas it's actually okay to wake up during the night time. Most of us will just roll over and just peacefully fall back asleep again. That's absolutely fine. Same if you wake up and go to the toilet during the night, mm -hmm. just go back to bed and go to sleep. Where some people make a big deal out of it. They're looking at the clock and going, oh my God, I'm awake, right? That's, you're causing the cortisol then to come along and that wakes you up even more. So it's to be aware of that really and to be aware of how we think and what's happening physiologically in the body. You know, it just makes so much sense. It's hilarious, actually. <laughs> it is. It is. And, but it's often related to what we do during the day as well. Because I remember I was working in corporate before. I used to be quite a high up in corporate, et cetera. And like, I'd wake up in the middle of the night because I was thinking about stuff. Right. And I'd wake up and I'd go like, oh, I can't forget this tomorrow. And I have to make that phone call. And I need to do this and that. And for a while, what I did was I put a, actually, someone told me. To put a little notepad beside my bedside table with a pen mm, and I'd yeah. write those things down and go back to sleep mm. now that helped but it, it didn't take the stress away from the day obviously but so everything during yeah. the day influences what you do at night right oh completely and I always say to people how you wake up in the morning time how you wake up in the morning is is um mm. you know and how how your day is sorry I say your sleep starts from the time you wake up in the morning because yes. How you are during the daytime is going to have an impact on how you are at nighttime. Because, yeah, again, it's all those stress levels because, you know, our cortisol is our stress hormone. That's naturally high in the morning time. And the cortisol is not totally a baddie. We need cortisol. Yeah, yeah. But that's supposed to dissipate during the day. But if you're going to bed and you're going, oh, I've got all this stuff to do, your cortisol is rising. And that's not not the natural way of things. Um, and that's what's causing an impact on difficulty getting asleep. Uh, it's one of the one of the, the problems. And then yeah. you're waking up during the nighttime as well because you're not totally, totally relaxed. You're waking up and then your mind is also going, Patrick, come on, it's time to get up. That's why a lot of people have difficulty. Um, they wake up really early in the morning because their body is waking them up going, right, come on, you have to get up and do this. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you keep a diary, do a brain dump at nighttime, that that, that really is effective. Right, right. Um, and if you find you're waking up during the nighttime, breathing, come back to your breath, do breathing because you're breathing, especially that deep belly breathing. Most of us don't breathe properly. No. And when we're doing that deep belly breathing right down to the belly, we're activating the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve is connected to all the organs in our body. But the vagus nerve activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest the, the a part of the yeah. autonomic nervous system. And it's just it's just amazing what the body does. And, and you can you can activate the vagus nerve singing. So you may okay. find if you do a lot of singing during the daytime that this can help with your vagus nerve. It can help reduce. This is one of the stress management techniques, you know, just singing. That's, so that, that's another that's a, it's a good excuse for people who think they can't sing. Sing anyway. Yeah, yeah. My <laughs> my daughter sings every morning before she goes to school and before she goes to school and it's just so great. And then she's always singing in the evening and before she goes to bed. And it's just it's like, oh my God, like she is just so happy. And you know, because when you're singing, you're you're focused on that and, and music sound is vibrational as well. Uh, even listening to music, especially classical music. Um, there, there's a there's a frequency there in the classical music that can really help uh, reduce stress. And really get you into that zone, that that peaceful place as well. Music is really uh, very effective. Um, dancing, moving, gargling is very good as well for the for the vagus nerve. Um, there's there's lots anywhere. of massage, even just massaging, mm -hmm. um, anywhere in the body, massage can help to activate. So there's lots of different things that you can do. But breathing, if you wake up during the night time, breathing is probably one of the most effective things that you can do. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, as you said, there is lots of things we can do. One of the one of the things I always and, and a lot of the, the people I work with, my clients do, is the three blessings exercise, which comes from positive psychology. So oh. at, the end, at the end of the day, just remind yourself, just before you go to bed, I usually tell people, remind yourself of the three best things that happened to you that day. It can be small things, tiny little things, like a mug of tea with a friend, whatever it is. But yeah. remind yourself, go back, make a habit of at the end of the day, check the three best things that happened to you that day, sit back in the energy of those three wonderful things and just let that sit there and then go to bed and see what happens. 
yeah 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 it's brilliant gratitude um yeah yes. I, I, I practice that and first thing in the morning as well to practice gratitude because gratitude is probably one of the purest vibrations that we have gratitude and it brings you right into the heart and um you can also do your breathing through your heart you can imagine breathing through your heart and really activating the heart energy as well that's something else you can add on top of that if you want it right. but gratitude is probably one of the best things that you can do because no matter what's going on in your life and look we all have stuff going on we all have challenges the world is happening around us Mm -hmm. and when you practice gratitude all you can feel is you just feel good you feel love in your heart and uh and you can you can yeah as small as a little thing um someone cleaned the kitchen or someone washed the dishes or it could be a big thing someone you love or a holiday that you've been to last year just bring yourself back there and remember that how anything there's loads of different ways but practice gratitude in the morning because the momentum of the day hasn't started yet Mm -hmm. so practicing gratitude in the morning helps you to create that positive energy which will help you throughout the day Mm -hmm. and then at night time as well help you sleep better at night yeah so it is it's very effective it is i read um, an article in the irish times online from about two or three days ago when a health survey were done and i'm not gonna lie because i can't remember who did the survey but there was a survey done to a health survey done in ireland in the last couple of weeks and from all the studies they've done before, the levels of anxiety, stress, and anger have never, ever been higher yeah. in Ireland yeah. than right now. So to have experts uh, on board like yourself yeah. uh, and to have resources like the ones you put online for people to research and to people to reach out to, I think this is, this is an opportunity for people like yourself and like myself and the people who uh, work in the holistic uh, industry to show people what it's all about really isn't it Uh, absolutely and you know something patrick like getting a good night's sleep is is a necessity um you know we can't live without sleep i mean the longest they actually did did, they did a trial uh, 11 days was the most that somebody could go without sleep and the guinness book of records don't allow that anymore because it's actually quite dangerous Yeah, Yeah. yeah so um uh, so we actually we really really need sleep it has an impact on so many we can't even speak properly for god's sakes you know if we don't get one night uh, if we have one night of uh, bad sleep deprivation it's equal to being drunk you can actually the levels of yeah. alcohol and in, in, in you know uh, it's actually equivalent to being drunk imagine um, I, know, I, and, said, I said i said yeah too quickly there but <laughs> but but the reason i know is like because i've, I've been uh, crewing and i've been involved in uh, 24 hour races so these are people who start running at nine in the morning and they'll keep running till nine the next morning and ask crew, uh, ask crew, you stay awake with them because you're actually feeding them and making sure they stay hydrated and whatever, wow. stuff like that. Wow, wow, and wow. even ask crew about 15, 16, 17 hours in of continuous moving around. And these people also are running, exercising. You see that you see actually the body's breaking down. You feel yes. yourself breaking down. Yes. You feel yourself like, completely there was times when i don't like i don't remember what i did for an hour yeah do you know that kind so it is really important oh i mean there's been all sorts of tests and studies done i mean your response time is is Mm -hmm. you know it takes longer for you to respond to something you know and uh, the cognitive function and you just can't think straight you can't speak properly and your movement and everything it's just it's just all affected and your mood everything it's just it's just so profound and that's only after one night of bad sleep deprivation can you imagine, yeah. like, if you're routinely doing it? No, absolutely. No, no, it's disastrous. Like, everything And actually, everything an interesting down. fact as well, Patrick, is um, uh, Matthew Walker. Um, I heard from Matthew Walker. If you have uh, one night, is it one night, uh, five hours or less of sleep, your immune mm-hmm. system is depressed by up to 70%. Now, we can't afford that in this day and age right now, what's going on. Mm-hmm. I think the very first line of defense here is for our immune systems to be strong. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I, sleep has yeah, that's that's something we spoke about with other people in the last couple of weeks here on the show as well. That's like how everyone tells us everything we can't do uh, for the last seven months, but there is not a lot of people. Thankfully, there's people like us who are yes. telling people what you can do to uh, improve your immune system. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. I think that's the first place to. And sleep has a massive impact there, and on on all the other areas as well. Like movement, movement helps produce all those, you know, the serotonin, and we need serotonin for 
to make the melatonin. Melatonins are sleep hormones. So we need to get outside. We need to be outside. We need to get sunshine. Like sunshine is so important. We get our vitamin D, which is part, which is what we need for our immune system as well. And I know we don't get much in Ireland. A lot of people argue that with me, but getting outside, getting fresh air, being in nature and getting sunshine helps to regulate your circadian rhythm and all the hormonal uh, production as well. You know, all that the hormones, we've daytime hormones and we've nighttime hormones and they're all regulated and sunshine primarily is the, the the one that facilitates that that drives all yeah. that you know so it's really important no absolutely because i can tell you if i if i from time to time it happens doesn't happen very often that i do spend an entire door in, uh, day indoors uh, it affects me immediately absolutely, absolutely. yeah it does. so yeah. um thanks for thanks for all that so far now how do you get out and about and tell people all about this because i i know you do your own podcast i know you write a book um, I've seen you do Toastmasters. I've seen you at networking. Joanne, you're everywhere. Yeah, it's great. I love it. I love, love it. I love it. And and Zoom is just fantastic now because it's just helped me. I've been meeting more people in the last couple of months now with Zoom and and uh, and all the rest. I have a young daughter, nine years of age, and uh, you know sometimes I can't be everywhere like physically. So Zoom enables me to do that. And um, yeah, I'm on. I'm on. Yeah, I do Toastmasters and I do uh, a lot of online stuff. I have a webinar coming up. I have a webinar coming up on the 20th of October. YourSleepSuccess.com, so people can register there. And say that again. Uh, say that again so your can... your sleep success dot com. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm going to have it up on Eventbrite as well. You'll find it on Eventbrite, but your sleep success dot com and right. uh, people can reg- register there for free. And uh, it'll be you know, there'll be Q&A's on that as well. I'll be taking questions. And awesome. um, it's it's really in advance of my 12 week live. So I'll be talking about my 12 week live program as well on 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 that masterclass. Yes. Um, but ultimately, yes. I'll be giving you five strategies to to get a, a good night's sleep. And what time is that on? That is on at half six. Six thirty on the twentieth. Yeah. Excellent. Half six. But and, and your twelve week life is starting the twentieth of November. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So um tell me before I forget, and this is really, really important. How do people get in touch with you? Joannecallahan.com. So I spell my name J O H A N N. Yes. J O H A N N. And uh, if you just Google Joanne Callahan, you'll find me everywhere. I'm you'll find my podcast. Uh, my uh, my podcast is called Empowering Family Health. So you'll find that if you, if you just Google Empowering Family Health or look up on any of your favorite podcasting platforms. I also have all my podcasts in my website as well. Um, so joannecallahan.com, you'll find me Facebook, uh-huh. LinkedIn. You'll find uh, lots of stuff there, interviews and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And you're involved in a couple of networks as well, because like I'm, I'm really interested in networking. So Yeah, that- I'm... I'm in uh, well the outstanding network, and um, so that's yes. Pastelaris Network, uh, yes. the Your Holistic Academy. So Your Holistic Academy has has a lot of um, calls as well during the week, um, and the Your Holistic Academy. I'm really excited about getting on board there with it. Your I, I met John Donnelly there actually in person in the Killashee there last week, week before. Oh, so we, we had a great. We were two hours like yap 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 yap. Brilliant. <laughs> he's just so inspiring. He's just he's just an incredible man. He really and he really has a big vision and a big heart behind the, the Your Holistic Academy. So I'm really excited about what's going to develop from it. And there's fantastic practitioners on the platform mm-hmm. as well. I've interviewed a few of them. Ashley okay. Tear, um uh, uh Jada, um lo- lots of people. I've interviewed yeah, John Donnelly, yeah. I've interviewed Therese. Yes. Fantastic. So, all people, nearly all people who've been on the show. Jada was on the show last week here. Absolutely. Uh, brilliant brilliant. About, like, um, yeah yeah absolutely brilliant she's, she's yeah, so coming out soon as well so that's right that's right yeah she's she's really she's great she's phenomenal um i could listen to jada all day she's got some really interesting tips and really you know good concepts and ideas behind um how to look after yourself and self-care really you know that's that's really really important and so many people and she's right so many people just don't look after themselves and they're criticizing themselves, even like up here mentally. You know, what are we saying about ourselves? We're giving out that we did this and we did that. And we're, 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 we're like, I'm not good enough. We're really saying to ourselves, I'm not good enough. And that's like, you need, you know, that's preventing us from creating or pulling towards is what it is that we really want in life because we're really saying to the universe, I'm not good enough to receive. And um, that's kind of ultimately what's happened. So we need to really stop giving out about ourselves. And I love what Yada is doing because you know she's telling people how to care for themselves and have compassion like self-compassion self-love all that and it all starts with ourselves first before we can improve relationships around us as well you know yeah. and again um, when we do that we're developing our shock absorbers you know yes i love that i love that 
Yeah, yeah. And I, that reminds me of one of the, you know, Winnie the Pooh. And there was a whole yeah. book ri written around the Taoisms of Pooh. Oh, yeah. You know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And one of them was, um, I look after me for you if you look after you for me. Yes. And I yeah. really love that. That's kind of what you just said. It's kind of so true. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Joanna, it was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, I'm sure I've loads more that I could tell you, maybe another conversation. But yeah, so your no. sleep uh, success.com people can come on to the free masterclass and find awesome. out more about my live and get my book. But yeah, it's been really interesting, Patrick, and you're doing fantastic work yourself. And uh, <laughs> it was really and, great. Uh, people, people who are listening to the show know I'm uh, starting my own podcast uh, in November. And um, I'd, I'd love to have you on that as well, Joy. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to come on to mine as well. You did say that, Woo! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> we'll Listen, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, you too, Patrick. I, 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 will, I will try and uh, check how long it takes me to fall asleep at night. And I'll let you yeah. know when I get on with this. Measure it, do. Absolutely. And if I can give you any help or tips, yeah, unique to yourself, absolutely. Have absolutely. a great day, Patrick. Have a fantastic day. Thanks, Joanne. All right. Bye. Bye.